we, we always wonder who the star of Davos is. You know, is it Brazil's president this year, Angela Merkel, Matt Damon, uh, Will I Am? Someone said to me yesterday, the star is AI. Um, it's a big deal this year. It is. It is the talk of Davos. Um, and the reason is that AI is being used in its broadest term from decision support all the way to machine learning algorithms that improve and learn. So AI is being used to describe everything, really using data and technology to automate, to optimize, to make better decisions. And the discussion has been around what does it mean? How can it be used? What are the risks? How should we govern it? What does it mean for jobs that might be lost? What does it mean for certain sectors like financial services? Well, well, let's let's talk about that. Re Refinitiv is at the heart of, of technology uh, innovation in the financial community. W where are you seeing opportunities to, to use AI <clears throat> to address real problem, real world problems in your industry? Well, we're very lucky in that we were involved in the earliest form of AI natural language processing 10 years ago when we started looking at news, looking at unstructured data and putting semantic analysis to categorize, to tag, to make sense of it. So we were very early in in this stage. And if I look at where we've recently made great advances, we're pricing 35,000, creating 35,000 muni bond curves every day. We're scraping documents for ESG information every day using AI. We're using Starmine credit alert scores using AI. So we've got some great examples uh, of what we're doing around data and news. The other part of what we're doing, of course, is we're making our data AI ready. Mm -hmm. uh, our clients are desperate to get economic time series, full tick data, uh, company data to run, test, get the machines to learn. So we've created the AI workbench and we're realizing that this is an opportunity to solve one of the biggest problems of AI, which is how do you create an exhaustive set of data to train the machines. What about the flip side? How wary should banks and financial services companies be of, of AI? Yeah, we had a really good discussion. Um, I was helping to lead a WEF session on AI with many of the other leaders of the technology and banking industry firms, many of the CEOs in the rooms. And we talked about an acronym for AI of FEET. AI needs to be fair, the F. It needs to be explainable. Um, People need to take accountability for what the machines do, and it needs to be transparent. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the discussion was around whilst there's huge advantages, we see them, we use them in AI, in optimizing what we do, in being more responsive and being faster. When the machines go wrong, they can go wrong faster and quicker. Um, and there was a very interesting discussion about how we need to hold AI to a slightly higher standard. We need to test it slightly better than you do with humans, because humans are more tolerant to error, they're more tolerant to messy data, uh, and when things go wrong with machines, it tends to be exponentially larger, and really interesting discussion around where the banks need to be careful. What about, I mean, I mean it's a discussion uh, here in Davos for the last few years, um, humans need not apply the takeover of human jobs by, by robots. Um, I, I think the, the consultancies throw out a lot of numbers, 50, 60% of, of jobs in certain industries w will be gone. Is that, is that scaremongering? What, what is, what's it going to look like in the financial services sector? Well, I was just talking with one of the government ministers, and, and he reminded us that um, when the year that the Davos Forum first started, 1970 so, was the year that Intel put the first chip in a calculator. Mm -hmm. um, and we could have all argued, oh my goodness, all the accountants are going to go away, and of course that didn't happen. So let's not immediately jump to the conclusion that suddenly all the jobs go away. But clearly, with increased automation, and with any technology revolution that's happened in history, you see a shift in talent, you see a shift in roles, and you see a shift in skills. Um, and I do think we all have a responsibility to help train our staff in the new skills and the new roles. You know, those more manual tasks, those repeatable tasks, they can be automated. But those tasks that require more human judgment, more emotional connection, um, those aren't going to be replaced by machines. So we've all got to think across society and across corporations, well, how do we retrain and help create the new jobs that will be generated by AI? Data, of course, is the foundation of, of, of all of this, um, and that's the business 
you are in. Uh, what, what, give us an idea of the, the, the sort of data, the amount of data we're talking about here. Well, of course, data is just the beginning. Um, we have a lot of data. We will today have probably collected and distributed 40 to 50 billion data points in 24 hours in 190 countries. So we know a lot about data, but it really is just the beginning because you need to clean it, collect it, understand what it means, give it context. You need to train the machines on it. You need to integrate it and really put it to work. Um, and where we see the advantage is, of course, we have a lot of data and we can help make that data ready for AI and help bring the expertise, the understanding, the providence and those things so that our clients can use the data in, in the most effective way. Final question, next big thing for AI, what, what should we, we look out for? I'm really looking out for the algorithms that learn. Um, as one expert in the room said, AI is still very simple. Uh, there are not many cases of where the machines really learn how to improve themselves. I think that's the next dimension um, of AI. And when we see self-improvement, I think what we're seeing at the moment is a lot of simple AI, repeatable AI, machine learning applied to natural language processing, visualization and those things. When the machines start to learn, I think we start to move to another exponential place um, of AI. But I think we're some way from that yet. David Craig, thank you very much indeed. Thank you.